If, it, if I'm saying something that ain't in, in his word, it ain't, it ain't true. It ain't about whose mouth to come out of it, it who's what you're saying. If you're saying about what Jesus is saying, Jesus can do it. Jesus will do it. All you got to do is believe then and yield to it and, and let him do what only he can do. Amen. Ha verse 18, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. In darkness, they're blind to the goodness and the mercy of God. They're blind to, to how much God wants to be a part of their life, how much God wants to walk with them and talk to them with them. And what happens then, who being past feelings have given over themselves to lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned in Christ. Jesus is teaching us something totally different. He's telling us something totally different. He's telling us what's available in him, through him, and by him. If ye have heard if it be so, you have heard him. How do you hear Jesus? A word, is a voice coming out of the sky. Every time you open up this Bible, Jesus is talking to you. God is talking to you. Every time you read a sentence in it, that's why I'm just so grateful that when, when I hear that 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 that, that, um, that um, phone go off and. I go ahead on after this charge, and I go ahead and push that button, and I get, I don't care. The sermon is all about Jesus. You know what? That word is inspiring. It's food for the soul. Strengthen you in, in the things that God says. It's just not an idle word. See, man's word is idle. The things I say as a person, as a man, they're idle. The things we say as a, a people is idle. But when you speak the word of God, it has power. To do what it said. That's what they. That's what they. My word should not come back to me void, but accomplish that which I sent it to do. What did it come to do? Change us, to make us like Him, to purge us, to clean us, to, to deliver us, to help us through whatever we got to go through. That ye put off. If so, ye have heard Him and have been taught by Him, as the truth is in Jesus, and He teaches us personally in what we're in, telling us that he's with us, that he can bring us through, and he can, he's watching over us. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the former lifestyle, the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. We all know how lustful that old man is. That's all he do is lust, lust, lust. But he's starting to put it off, put it off. But then after you, you put off, you got you need to clean up. You know, it's something else if you, you know, I think about those people that walk around in their pajamas. It's a terrible thing if they take their pajamas off and just put on new clothes or regular clothes. You know, you, you need to wash up. You need to take a shower. You need to get some soap and water. And you know, Jesus, he provides that for us. Let's go to Malachi, third chapter. See, see Jesus... Jesus got a special soap. See, he comes with this soap, this cleansing agent that can do away with sin, that can wash away our sins. All we gotta do is keep listening to it. Let's go to Malachi third chapter, first verse, and it says, Behold, I will send my messenger. He shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to, to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And what shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner, and a purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. And they shall be an offering of Judah and Jerusalem to be pleasant to the Lord. And in the days of old, 
as in the former years, and I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against the false swearers, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, that turn aside the stranger from his sight, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts, for I am the Lord. I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. All those things that were promises to Israel and the Jews are our promises in Christ Jesus. He is going to bring all those things to pass, and he is going to clean us up. Let's go to Ephesians, fifth chapter. Jesus has that power to come in, in us as a refiner's fire, and full of soap, clap, wash away. What is, it? Who is washed? what is washed away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. They able to do that. His blood has got the power. Let's go to Ephesians 5th chapter. And I want to start at the 25th verse. It says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. You know, that's a big scripture. I used to wonder about that a lot of times. I said, Lord, when my wife was living, I had to, after he really started to, you know, really brought me out, brought me back to the church, and started to straighten me out and everything. I asked him, Lord, please teach me to love her like you love your church. Cherish her like you cherish your church. He died for us. He let them crucify him, spit on him, crown him on him. He went through a lot for us. And he wants us to be the same way that we might love the husband. For the husband, do If for the church is something, shit. Husbands, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it and cleanse it out with the washing, the water, by the word. We are being cleansed, sanctified by hearing, believing, and trusting his word. That he might present to himself a glorious church, not having a spot, a wrinkle, or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blame. You know, Jesus never fails. Everything he comes to do, he can do. And he will do. We just got to, but he's got to do it. We can't do it ourselves. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man yet hateth his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherishes it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. And this verse 32 is really the central of all this saying. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. God's church, Jesus is loving us and taking us as his bride. Amen. And he cares for us. And he is the one that loves us and will bring us through whatever we have to live through. Let's go to Titus, third chapter. It's Titus, third chapter. Titus, the third chapter. I'm going to start at the I want to start the first verse. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers and to obey magistrates and be ready to every good work. You know, just obey the laws of the land. You know, Jesus is in our lives to give us the power to do that, to do the right thing. To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. You know, he has to come into us. He said he'd take the high and make them low. He'd, he'd take the crooked and make them straight. You know, and he'd, take, he'd take the angry and make them blessed. And, you know, he, he, he comes into our lives, and no matter what our biggest problem is, or 
by situation as he can get, he can put it down. But we also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and in envy, hateful and hating one another. Ain't that the truth? It's old flesh don't, there's no good thing in the flesh. It just hates, hates, and dislikes, and has its opinion, everything contrary to God. But after that, the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward men appear. And it can only appear in your life. When Jesus appeared in your life, he appeared with his kingdom, love, joy, peace, kindness, all those things that only he has. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost keeps talking to us, keeps walking with us, keeps reminding us of all the great things God has done in our lives and doing even greater things as we continue on, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. You know, he just keeps poor. The more that you are relating to God, the more that you are listening to his word, the more that you are trusting in his word, the more he will pour out his spirit and strengthen you and let you know how much he cares about you and loves you and he's with you. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou confirm, affirm constantly always be reminded because you got all these other voices telling you all different you got all these other sights that you see showing that it's different but jesus is in your life to prove to you that he's with you to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask to think and to bring you through all the different situations that you might be in this is a faithful saying and these things that will thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in god might be careful to maintain good works these are good and profitable unto men god will bless you you know just like start saying to 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 lamar god has not forgot your labor of love the things that you do because in in he will pour out his blessing upon you. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 7 chapter. You know, after we put off, we need to clean up. Let Jesus clean you up. We can't clean ourselves. You know, we babes. We, we, we need him to clean us. You know, but as we listen to his word, and we, 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 we let him speak to us, and we trust in it, and we yield to it, he'll do his part. All he wants is to, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat of the fat of the land. You shall be receive his blessings. And I want to go to 2 Corinthians 7, chapter, first verse. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved. You know, I'm so glad God makes promises. Ah, that's why I'm glad he makes them. You nailed it, sister. He keeps his promises. All he needs somebody to believe. That's all he needs. If you believe it, you shall receive. He will do everything he promised. Having therefore these promised dearly loved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Letting him tell us what he wants to do in our lives and trusting him that he will come finish that which he started. Also, I was thinking about Jesus and how he set the disciples down when they were at Passover. He went and got a towel and got a bucket and got water and he began to wash them. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus is still washing his people. Yeah. You know, he's still cleansing us. Yeah. He's still, he's still uh, uh, you know, doing all the things that we need done. Every time we assemble ourselves, every time we open up this Bible, every time we, we, we talk one to another and lift up his name, he's there to give us what only he can give us. But then after you get cleaned up, it's time to put on. Let's go to Galatians. Time for God to put something on you, something to give you something, to bring you into something. Let's go to Galatians, third chapter. And I'm going to start at the 10th verse. And have put on the new man. See, the old man, he got put off. He died. 
he getting exterminated by the hand of God, by the word of God. He needs to die. Because there ain't no good thing in the flesh. He needs to be put down. Because all the greatness and goodness of the Lord is in the spirit. So the new man, which we're talking about now, Jesus puts himself on us, in us, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Now, all of a sudden, Otto's dying, and Jesus is coming alive. All of a sudden, things that other, you know, Tyrone Jr. used to be and say, Jesus is in his life to start to put that down, and Jesus is starting to appear. All of a sudden, his kingdom becomes a part of each and every one of our lives. And in his kingdom, in his love, peace, and joy, that only he can give. Because there ain't no love, peace, and joy out here in this world. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how fine your wife is. I don't care how handsome your husband is. You can have angels for children. But you know what? It ain't no love, peace, and joy in the flesh. Only Jesus has that. That is able to give it to you. No matter what situation you might be in. And it's in the new man. That is created after him. And that's what he's doing. He's putting us and making us in his own image. The only thing we're going to need is the new body. You know, because he said that everything that he, he, he had, the glory that is revealed in us, yeah. it's already there. It's in us. It's growing every day. The more that you hear from him, the more that you talk, and the more that you, the regeneration of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of Christ in your life, the stronger he gets. Verse 11, where there's neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Sassanian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy. Let your image be full of mercy. You know, it's, mercy is, it, 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 it is a great gift because it, it really gives everybody a chance to know how merciful God is. Instead of being so judgmental, so angry, so upset, about everything going on, be merciful to those that don't, haven't been, don't have access to the one that got the power to help them, to give them mercy, which is Jesus. But all therefore is the elect of God, holy and beloved, vows of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, all those gifts, all those things that he wants us to do. And, and when he says long-suffering, He's not talking about you suffering. He's talking about us putting up just like God suffers with us. God's not suffering. He's suffering, putting up with us, showing us what we should do and what we could do, and then seeing us not being able to do it because the enemy has distracted us, confused us, and done it. But he suffers with us. He doesn't cut us off. We got to learn to suffer with others. They might not be out of what, by the grace of God, we are out of. They might still be bound to drugs. They might still be bound to alcohol. They still might be bound to other things that by the grace and mercy alone of God, he has delivered us from. We have to suffer with them and love them like God suffered with us and loved us and do whatever God wants us to do to help them realize there's only one that can break those powers in people's lives, and his name is Jesus. He's the only one that can do that. No one else can do it. Do it. Forbearing one another. Long-suffering is forbearing. The things that are going on around you. We can't change them. We can't make them well and heal them. We can't make them get delivered from what's got them bound. All we can do is thank God that we've got delivered from what we have got delivered from and know that the only one that delivered us is Jesus. And he gets all the glory and the praise and the thanksgiving. And forgiving one another. Back to forgiveness again. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also ye do. You know, that's a, that's a hard one. A lot of people don't forgive. A lot of, let me tell you quick, I forgive you, but 
I ain't gonna forget. Well, if you forgive, you call it, that ain't forgiving. That ain't forgiving. You know, you, cause you still gonna remember what that happened to you, how you feel about that. Because I'm, I'm glad God ain't forgive like that. He said, I take, I forgive you and I take it and I throw it in my sea of forgetfulness. And I choose not to remember. See, God really can't forget. Because he's God, he knows everything. But he can choose in your life not to remember because you're covered in the blood. And all he sees is Jesus. He don't see us. He don't want to see us until the blood do the work. And the blood will do the work. It will. It will. It, it, it ain't never fail. He said he ain't losing nothing. He's going he gonna to get it done. You know, that's, that's Jesus. He's able. Forbearing one another, forgiving one another, if any man ever quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, also ye do ye. And above all of these things, put on charity. And you can't put on charity if you can't forgive. You can't love if you can't forgive. That's the beginning of love. First, you got to forgive. You got to forgive everything that everyone has done to you that you feel is wrong. Then you got to forgive yourself for doing what wrong you did. And, they, and every one of us been did wrong. So, so ain't nobody, you know, everybody talk about what happened to you and what I've been through and what I all I, you don't talk about what you did. I know me for one, I didn't do a whole lot. So I just thank God that he's, he's merciful and he's able to forgive. And he's willing to forgive. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfect. And let the peace of God rule in your heart. You know, when you forgive, you start getting peace. And all that turmoil starts, all that confusion starts to go right out the window. And, you know, you start getting that confidence. Ain't no spirits going to bother me because I know inside me the name of Jesus. Jesus is in me. And in the name of Jesus, you get on out of here and you go ahead towards some torment somebody that don't know you because Jesus knows you, knows you and he has put you out of my life and put you down. And I'm going to lift him up and let him keep putting him down. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you are called into one body. And be ye thankful. I'm beginning to find out every day how good God has been to me. I'm beginning to rejoice more and more in him. Be more and more thankful. Because of how blessed he has made us through the truth that he has spoken to us. Through his word and the things that he has had the power to do in our lives. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom. See, I can't get enough of God's word. You know, I, I remember Brother Will said to me years, we talked years ago, and he even said it in church. He said when, you know, when he read the Bible, it was like he was right with them. I got the same feel. I mean, it's not a boring book to me. It's a happy book to me. And you know what? It keeps on, just like Christ in you grows, this word keeps on growing. No matter how many times I read it, I get a different interpretation of the things as I grow in it. His wisdom starts to open up to me the things that he wants me to know. To show me that he's with, and I'm not talking about myself personally, the body of Christ, all of us. That's what he does. He's in our lives to show us how much he loves us and we can grow in him. And you know what? Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. You know, every time when I, when I get a look at those devotions and everything, it inspires me. When I talk to a brother or sister in the Lord, talk to Brother Redwine called me today. We were talking, praising God. You know, any, any time that I have a conversation with anyone in the Lord, it's a blessing. Because you know what? There's only one topic we're going to talk about, and that's Jesus. And what he's done, and what he's doing in our lives. And whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Now I want to go to Ephesians, fourth chapter. <coughs> I 
This is fourth chapter. And I want to go to the 24th verse. And we'll put him on. Let's go to the 23rd verse. Ephesians 4th chapter, 23rd verse. And be, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. All of a sudden, and it's not all of a sudden, it takes a little time. And it does. It's done, in, you know, incrementally, not all of a sudden, but instead of your mind being on all the things and all the problems and all the worries and all the frustrations and all the fears and, and all the stress and all the things that are going on around you, your mind will start to be on Jesus. Your mind will start to be listening to the things that he's saying to you and trusting in the things that he's saying. And you start to get renewed in the spirit of your mind. Your mind starts to think of him and what he has done for you and how he has blessed you and what he has delivered you from. The Holy Ghost starts regenerating you in the spirit of your mind, that your mind starts to be not directed about all the problems and the sorrows and the sadness that we're surrounded about, but all the deliverances and the blessings and the, the, the testimonies and the things that God has done all around us. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither, neither give place to the devil. Don't let none of his ways, or none of his thoughts and desires that he wants to put in our heart and our head be there. Let the goodness and the mercy and the grace and the love and the kingdom of God be in our minds. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that, that, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which is good, that he may give to him that is needed. You know, a lot of times, you know, I hear people, they, 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 they sometimes seem to think that God is cruel. And he said, if a man don't eat, if a man don't work, he shouldn't eat. But you know, God knows all the potential that he gave each and every one of us. And God knows that he wants us to be in a position where we can be a blessing to others and strengthen others. He's not being mean. Of course, if somebody's incapable of working, he wouldn't put that on them. But for a man that is capable, it's something that you really should do. Because in everything, God has a purpose to do. So that we can be a blessing to everything that we're around. Instead of just being, you know, looking at four walls and not really doing anything for his glory. Yeah, where am I at? 420. Which one? Thank you. Let no corrupt communication proceed out your mouth, but that which is good used to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace on the hearing. You know, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, where you are sealed until the day of redemption. You know, God wants to walk and talk with you and, and be with you. And it's good to listen to God, listen to Jesus, and not have a whole lot to say. You know, sometimes we want to give all our problems and, and just tell them our problems and tell them our problems and keep reminding them of our problems in our situation. He said, just bring it to the throne of grace and give it to them. He said, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. And then after you throw, put them on there and you forget about them, uh, you wake up one day and guess what day you look in, it won't be. It's gone. What was bothering you about what's in you is gone. What's tormenting you is gone. What's made you sad is gone. All those things that the enemy has put in our lives, he can wipe them right out.
And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God when you are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. All that jumping up and down, howling, hooping and tearing up and going off and all that stuff. God wants you, that's all of the flesh. That's why everybody's so, it's such a, a, a frenzy now. You know, you, you drive down the street and they want to, you know, they, you, you're going slow, somebody want to kill you. You know, they, they you know, it's, you know they, they shoot you for nothing. You know, it's, it's crazy. You know, because those spirits have ramped up everything so much in their lives and they're so, you know, so caught up in it. And now they then gave out all these guns, and guess what? They gave out, you know, and they didn't give them out. They bought them and all that kind of stuff. And guess when, and when Satan give you something like that, he's going to find a way to make you use it. And cause a lot of problems, and cause yourself a lot of problems. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. And that's what he's calling us to do. That's what he wants to put on us. He wants to put those things on us so that we can have those things in our lives. Let's go to Ephesians 6 chapter. And I want to go to the 10th verse. Ephesians is next page, 6th chapter, 10th verse. And it says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. How do you get strong in the Lord? We know how we get strong in the flesh. You go to the gym, you work out, you eat the right foods, you do, you know, you get your sleep, you do those things to get strong in the flesh. But how do you get strong in the spirit? We're getting even strong in the spirit right now this evening. Because what we're doing is we're listening to his word. We've assembled ourselves. We've sung praises unto him, testimonies unto him, thanking him for being in our lives. That strengthens the inner man. That helps him get strong so we can meet the problems and the situations that are waiting for us tomorrow. And God has done that so that we can, verse 11, put on the whole arm of God. You know, that was what the title was. Let us put on the arm of light and put on the Lord Jesus. He's our armor. He's the one that has provided all these things on us, in us, that we might be able to stand. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against 